Okay then, Eddie, to begin with, we'd like to ask about your usual day at work, how it looks like and what you, um, what you love in football life on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, first of all, I love uh, just being out on the training ground, everyday basis. Once you finish, um, and unfortunately I finished early, uh, 27, and you feel as if you've, you've left something out there. And um, I just like to give, uh, I still feel as if I've got loads to give. And um, I like to express my experiences and my knowledge to help to help players to uh, try and achieve what they want to achieve, really. So that's it. And on a day-to-day -day basis, um, obviously I normally arrive here between 8 and 8.30. Uh, I'm out on the training ground by 10.30. And, uh, and then obviously we go from there. So. Okay. Uh, a lot of the players that come in have, have said that there seems to be a very promising future mm -hmm. for them at Loftus Road. How does it feel from a staff perspective? Well, we've always said that uh, obviously that's, that's a, a lovely compliment to have. Um, I think that what we've always liked to, to give players is what we would have liked ourselves in terms of on the training ground every day. And uh, my philosophy is quite simple. I believe that you should train every day as if the whole world's watching you. And that way, that way that you know you're always trying. Okay, uh, QPR made some high quality signings in the transfer window. Um, it's a, a big leap. Who's the most hard working player? Um, on training, who impresses you the most in terms of their training? I never like to um, individualise players. Um, I think everybody has their own characteristics, um, but I've been very impressed with the mentality of the guys that we brought in, and I'm sure that that mentality will help the rest of the group, but I have to say that I'm not one to individualise players. Um, we hopefully give them the right work, and then it's up to them uh, how they imply themselves, and uh, I've been fortunate since I've been here that uh, you know, most of the time the lads have applied themselves and when they haven't, then they've had a little bit of a reminder. Okay. Um, some, some people say that QBR have gone for too much experience in terms of the age of players. What's the, the thoughts from a staff perspective on that? Um, well, first of all, you can never have too much experience. Uh, secondly, um, you know, it's what players become available to you and uh, where you think that they will fit and improve your squad. And I think that it's no good bringing players in if you don't think they're going to improve. Or, a better, or any better than what you have. I think we've improved the squad. It might take us a little bit of time to gel, um, but hopefully we can get there quickly with the work that we're doing on the training ground. Okay, um, the QPR squad has been greatly enhanced mm -hmm. since yourself, Mark Hughes, the management team arrived back in January. Do you think the squad is now good enough for the season ahead? Well, we like to think so. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, you always look at the squad and think that you might have done better here and there, but uh, no, we're, we're pleased with the squad we have. And now it's uh, it's up to us guys and players out there to uh, to obviously give the best and, and hopefully our best is good enough to take us on a strong and positive season. Okay, and what is the target for QPR this season? Well, the target is to be as good as we can be. Um, obviously, we haven't started great. Um, we'd like to have started better, of course. But, um, you know, we feel as if we can get in the middle of the pack at least. And, um, you know, that'll be our aim. But I don't like setting targets. I think you take on... I'm very old-fashioned in that respect. You take game, game by game, week by week, and uh, you develop from there. Okay, I don't think it'd be fair to ask you to predict who will be relegated, but who, in your opinion, will win the Premier League this season? Well, I don't think you can look too far outside the top four. Um, I think that, you know, we've already played Manchester City. We know what a strong side they are, and obviously through our experiences there with the players who are still left, we know that they're very, very good players. I think Manchester United obviously have a lot to prove this season after losing it. Last season, uh, I think they'll be up there strongly. And again, uh, uh, Chelsea and Arsenal will be very strong, no matter what anybody says, they will be very strong. OK, you've worked for a number of years with Mark Hughes. What makes your work with him so pleasant? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, obviously, I've worked with Mark now since 1999, and I've known him a lot longer than that, of course. But uh, he's very good at delegating, and once he delegates, he expects you to get on with the job. And... Uh, you know, he, he then expects you to do it to the best of your ability. So um, uh, we know how each other's strengths, and I'm sure he knows my weaknesses. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it, he's, he's a good guy to work for. We know each other very well, and um, he knows that I'll always give him my best for him. Okay, what's the difference between QPR and the other teams you have worked for? Ooh. I think that's a little bit unfair, but um, obviously I've, I've been fortunate to work for some very, very big clubs. And um, our aim is to, to get Queen's Park Rangers as close to that, if not up to that level, um, during the time we are here. So I think that's very unfair, but we've been very impressed. And as you can see, looking out here in Elpool, the, the, 
the work that's done in Midlob in, in the first six months we've been here now, it's important that we kick off and we use the facilities to the best of our ability. Okay, you were at Manchester City when the team was growing up and becoming a, a new power in England. Yeah. Is QPR heading in the same direction? I think that's too early to say. I think we have a, a, a fabulous owner, a really good backroom staff. I think the people at QPR are all pulling the same way and uh, that can only help us along our journey. But I think that's that's very, very early because you're talking about a, a club that's, uh, you know, in the process of probably, you know, talking about taking the stadium up to 60,000 people, with, you know, but, uh, you know, we, we have our own plans. The chairman is very ambitious. Um, obviously, he dreams, we dream, that one day we'll be up there with the big boys. Okay, and um, finally, you have Polish origins. Could you tell us more about your Polish side? If you played in the Welsh national team, mm. was there ever an opportunity to play for Poland? I was approached by uh, somebody from Poland a long, long time ago, um, but at that stage I'd already played for the, uh, the Welsh youth team, Welsh school boys and Welsh youth team, so that, in those days, used to, uh, then you couldn't apply for any other country. Um, obviously, I take great interest in, in Poland because both my parents were Polish. Um, they, they met during the war, they were 14 and 16, they married in Innsbruck after the war in 1946, and they came over to Wales, my father was looking for his brother. Um, who we never found, um, but they they settled in Wales and um, unfortunately now now passed away. But um, we you know I have two sisters and uh, and also my wife's father is, was Polish as well. So uh, we have a very very strong um, allegiance to Poland. Okay, uh, very finally they say to pass on their best wishes from all the QPR Polish fans. Thank you very much, Jindok. Thank you much.